to win. To win with honor, integrity, and discipline, with selfless service. They make up the code that all Aggies live by. Our traditions are what define us. We play for the 12th man because we know we never stand alone. And so he has just taken it to the house. Wow. Tonight, we represent the SEC and the great state of Texas. We are. We are. We are. We are. Texas A&M. Oklahoma Sooner football, a program rich in history. These players and coaches walk in the footsteps of some of college football's legendary greats. With a win tonight, this year's Sooners team is poised to leave a proud legacy of its own. For more than a century, across the grand history of college football, only one school, one football team, has been known as the Sooners. The University of Oklahoma. The University of Oklahoma. Through all the unforgettable years, all Americans and Hall of Fame legends have called OU home. Now we stand together as a team, like those before us, prepared to etch our name to Sooner history. We are proud to share the Big 12 Conference Championship. Tonight, Brace shoulder to shoulder. We focus on one more trophy. And the glory of winning the Cotton Bowl Classic. Cotton Bowl Classic. Before it, the eyes of the nation. On our sport's biggest stage. Deep in the heart of Texas. Only one team wears our name across its crypts and chest. Yesterday, tonight, and forever. We are the Oklahoma Sooners. It took less than a week to sell this game out. 85,000 in attendance. We're ready for the 77th Cotton Bowl. Coin toss coming up next. AT&T is proud to bring you the Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox. Welcome back to Cowboys Stadium. Time now to go down to tonight's referee, Tom Zamorski, for the coin toss. Gentlemen, congratulations on a great season. Welcome to the 77th AT&T Cotton Bowl. This is the commemorative coin. It has Texas A&M emblem on this side and an Oklahoma emblem on this side. Mr. Andy Geis from AT&T will flip the coin Whichever side lands up will be the winner of the toss. Mr. Geis. Texas A&M, you've won the toss. You want to receive. Which way do you want to kick? All right, A&M, come around this way. Oklahoma. Texas A&M will receive at this end. Shake hands, guys. Have a great game. So coming up, Texas A&M will get the football. We'll get our first look at the Heisman winner, Johnny Manziel. Kickoff of the 77th AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic coming up right after this. Welcome back, ready for kickoff. But first, let's go downstairs where our Julie Alexandria is standing by. Thanks so much, Gus. Coach, a whirlwind season for you and your team. First year in the SEC, the Heisman winner at quarterback. How did you prepare these guys for the game today? Well, they've been doing the things 
well all year. Uh, we got to be prepared for uh, the tempo of the game. I think turnovers, ball security will be the, the issue early. Just getting back to game speed. Uh, we got to get up to speed real quick, and if we can do that, I think we can be successful. Thank you so much, Coach. Good luck to you. Moments ago, Petros caught up with Coach Bob Stoops. All right, we'll get to Petros later. Meanwhile, John Manziel coming on the field. And Charles, not a long time ago, he was an unknown redshirt freshman quarterback. Now he's the Heisman Trophy winner and one of the most talked about players in America as he runs it on first down and gets to the 30. And right away, they got him back into game action. Remember, as the Heisman Trophy winner, consensus All-American, and so many other awards, he's been out there with a lot of banquet circuit, a lot of officials, a lot of media, but he didn't miss a whole lot of practice time. They want to just get him going early, and they did. Game five on the first play. Here's Molina running left. And Molina slung to the ground. Good open field tackle by Gino Grissom. And right away, we get an early challenge here. Why? The number one team in the nation at third down conversions is Texas A&M at 55%. Oklahoma's defense only gives up 41%. Key one right off the bat. Third down and three at the 32. Here's Menzel with time. Menzel all day. Now Menzel in trouble. He'll roll out looking for the first down. Gets it and more at midfield and a slide down. At the Oklahoma 45, improvisation, a gain of 23. And this is why he's Johnny Football. Wait, 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 freeze. Freeze. They've got him right there. No. He slipped out of the noose, and he's gone. Manziel has thrown for over 3,000 yards, rushed for over 1,000 yards as well. He'll hand it off. It's Molina in the running room, and he dives forward. And get to the 35, Gabe Lynn with the tackle. One thing about this game, this is fast break football. They're going to get it to the line and get it snapped quickly. Here's another handoff, Molina. And Molina powers forward inside the OU 25. And not only are they going quickly, they go right back to what works. That inside handoff to Molina is getting about five a crack initially. The last play, he picks up more and another first down. Clarence McKinney's the new play caller now, although I suspect Kevin Sumlin will have a heavy hand in calling tonight's game. They'll go fast, and they don't mind going back to what continues to work for them offensively. And a timeout call by Oklahoma. They need to take a breath. A&M, fast start. A gain of 23 yards, 10 yards, and 11 yards on the last three plays, and we'll be right back after this special commercial break where we never leave the field. Opening drive for Texas A&M. As they continue to march it down the field, and CD, these two teams are very familiar with each other. One may be in the SEC now, but I know Oklahoma still looks at them as a Big 12-type team, especially on offense. They played just last year. Not unfamiliar territory for either squad. First down and 10 at the 24 of Oklahoma. A&M has scored first in every game they've played this season. He only called one pass play so far that turned into a Manziel scramble. Here's Manziel underneath and caught Mike Evans. The former basketball player, high school basketball player, has had an outstanding year, 75 catches over 1,000 yards, averaging 14 yards a grab and pick up three there. And with the way A&M is running the ball early, the playbook is wide open. They can go run or pass. And Alita gobbled up quickly on this play. Frank Shannon. Stress tonight will be on the safeties of Oklahoma because of the run game with Texas A&M and the quarterback scrambles. What are they going to do in terms of playing the run and also be available in pass coverage? Third down and nine at the 23. Manziel reverses. Manziel with the lane. Manziel down the sideline. And Manziel still running out of bounds. 
No, they get a touchdown. Manziel tight roping the sideline gets in. 23 yards. Here's the issue. Is they're trying to contain him here and here, but he exits and reverses out. Now there's no one there. I know they'll probably take a look at this, but look at him. Down the, the timeline and dances into the end zone. Review. They'll have to look and see how he did on the sideline. But Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football, may have become Johnny Houdini yet again. And if this stands, Texas A&M has now scored a touchdown on its opening drive in 10 games this year. Another look. I think this is going to, going to hold up. I don't think that he got to the white part of the sideline and he was able to skip and leap into the end zone. I think this play will stand as called, ruled a touchdown on the field. See right there, that'd be the foot in question. It was clearly in. That's a touchdown. And a fired up Johnny Manziel on the A&M sideline. So for those worried about rust in the banquet circuit, worry no more. Coach Kevin Sumlin hoping that this stands in his first year. What a job, 10 wins. After further review, ruling is on the field, is confirmed, touchdown. <laughs> 20th rushing touchdown of the season for Manziel. And A&M with an opportunity to take a seven to nothing lead, once again scoring on their opening drive. Taylor Bartolette. And the extra point is good. 12-21 to play first quarter. AM strikes first. The Heisman Trophy winner. Magical. AT&T is proud to bring you the Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox. Johnny Manziel leading Texas A&M to the first score of the game, and he is fired up. Tremendous example of handling all that's been thrown at him and that is he's been crowned with so far. It's absolutely staggering when you think about a redshirt freshman sweeping all the major awards. Consensus All-America comes in now and plays against a top-ranked team like the Oklahoma Sooners. And looks like it's an afternoon walk in the park on the first drive. 18th straight game in which AM has scored first. Now Oklahoma will get a shot. Roy Friend, Brennan Clay, back deep. And this one kicked out of the end zone. So that'll bring on a young man that has done so much at Oklahoma. As a matter of fact, when the season began, he was a candidate for the Heisman Trophy. Landry Jones ends up second team all Big 12 has the incredible respect of his team they will follow him anywhere and I think he likes the fact the spotlight is somewhere else gives him an opportunity it'll be interesting to see what Mark Snyder defense coordinator Texas A&M does early will he show pressure drop out and then try and heat him up later I know he wants the ball out of his hands quickly first down and 10 at the 25 Damian Williams in motion they find him Williams trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. Young man from the San Diego area pushed out of bounds by Jonathan Stewart. But Jones, he started his career right here at Cowboys Stadium in a 14 to 13 loss to BYU in 09 when he replaced the injured Sam Bradford. And ironically, it will end here at Cowboys Stadium. 
Jones throwing far side caught and out of bounds. Justin Brown, the Penn State transfer. And the initial first down, and when Oklahoma gets a first down, they want to go a little bit quicker. If they get a big explosive play, 15, 20 yards downfield, they'll go even faster. Jones with time in the pocket. Over the middle and incomplete. Sterling Shepard, the intended receiver, that ball thrown to Tad High. And Oklahoma stays on the line of scrimmage. And the thing for Texas A&M is that they built their defense tonight to not worry about substitutions. They think that they are flexible on the defense to where whatever Oklahoma presents, they can morph into the proper coverage. Second down and 10 at the 36. And they'll hand it off to Miller with all sorts of running room. And the bruising fullback picks up the first down as he gains 11 on the play. And one of the great mysteries to me is Trey Miller with only 29 rushes on the season coming into this game. A terrific player. They swing it out. Saunders is stop. And Saunders will get inside Texas A&M territory. Tony Hurd Jr. holding on to an ankle after the five-yard pickup. And Charles, these teams are almost mirror images of each other offensively. The only difference is what Johnny Manziel can do outside of the pocket and hurt you a lot more than Landry Jones can. And Damian Williams running straight ahead. He picks up one yard. Third and four. I expect AM to bring pressure on this play. I think now we see them try to heat up Landry Jones. Mark Snyder, that's his MO. That's who he is. He does not like to sit back. He wants the ball in his hands quicker. From the 47. Williams, the pistol back. Jones. Underneath and caught. Miller with the reception and a first down. And we've been waiting for Miller to really be worked into the system at Oklahoma. It has not made much sense to me. I think he's a terrific ball carrier, a tremendous receiver. His lack of touches is puzzling to me because when he touches the ball, he does damage. Averaging over almost six yards a carry and over 11 yards per catch. Gained six there. First down and 10 at the 41. Opening drive for OU. Play fake. Jones looking for Kenny Stills. Under pressure. And he'll dump it out of bounds. Great pressure by Spencer Neely, the senior, who moved inside this year. He's out of San Antonio, number 99. I know that was an incompletion, but that's part of the evolution of Landry Jones that we've seen this year. He wanted to work on being able to work with pressure in the pocket and getting out of the pocket. An incompletion, sure, but the proper play. Got out of the pocket, threw it away, didn't take a sack. Continues to get more elusive. A nice senior move by Landry Jones. Second and 10 to 41. Jones, delayed handoff, flag on the play. Looks like DeMontre Moore may have jumped. What a season this man has had. 12 and a half sacks, 20 tackles for losses. Offsides, defense, number 94, five yard penalty, still second down. And he's an outside linebacker by trade. So here's Moore, who's moved to down defensive end this year. He's going to get the extra jump into the neutral zone too fast, flagged on it. But look for him to play all over. He used to play the joker position, a stand-up linebacker that moved around a lot. He followed Von Miller in that spot. Now as a down defensive end, they'll still move him around to try and find good matchups to rush the passer. Second down and five of the 36. Jones. Underneath that, Kenny still First grab of the game, looks close to a first down as Dustin Harris brought him down. Every time we talk to that young man, there's a little sparkle, isn't there? Yes. Kenny Stills, I talked to him in pregame tonight and I said, I remember something you told me a couple years ago. I love big light games. There's no bigger light tonight in college football than this game. Kenny still says he's ready for it. He's their leading receiver, 75 catches coming into this game. For close to 900 yards. Tenth play of the drive that started at the 25. First down and 10. 
Jones handing it off. Shepard around the corner. Spinning. And finally going down, Jonathan Stewart, the middle linebacker with the tackle after a six-yard game. And that should have been stopped earlier. DeShazer Everett, one of the better secondary players for Texas A&M, maybe their best athlete, missed a tackle on the corner that allowed the pickup of the six yards. Now Brennan Clay checks in the backfield for OU with Miller. Landry Jones in the shotgun. Jones to Clay. And Clay running right will get down to the 20 yard line. Another first down for Oklahoma. You know what this drive is? This is a settling drive. After the fireworks that AM threw at Oklahoma with Manziel and all the sorties he had that culminated in the end zone, Oklahoma needed a drive like this to calm everyone down. Relax a little bit, folks. It's not going to be, let's not go have it so jangly all night. Here the offense is settling the whole team down. Oklahoma started the drive with 12.21 on the clock. We're closing in on eight minutes now. First down to the 20. Jones, near side, Stills. He'll bounce it outside up the sideline, and Kenny Stills tiptoes out of bounds at the five. Can go back and pat Justin Brown, I believe, number 19 on the helmet, and say thank you. Excuse me, that was 18, Jalen Saunders. Pat him on the helmet for the help he got on the corner with the block that allowed him access to the sideline. And expect to see the bell dozer, Blake Bell. And Oklahoma, if they can get this ball inside the five yard line. Saunders in the slot has had a terrific finish of the year with his last three games. First down and goal. Here's Williams. And Williams drops. At the one. And it's a free play because of the jump. And I think they'll let the play stand because otherwise it's half the distance to the goal line instead of the extra yardage they get on the run. Offsides against the defense, number 10. The penalties decline. Second down. That's Sean Porter. See, you would have gotten less yardage even though you saved the down. Porter, top of your screen there, jumped free play. Williams may, takes advantage of it, gets it down tight. And here's your guy, Gus, the belldozer. That's right, Blake Bell. 6'6", 254 pound quarterback. At, at some point tonight, they will throw the ball out of this formation, something they don't do often. Bell runs it. And Bell trying to push forward and can't get there. First contact made by Howard Matthews and Sean Porter eventually brought him down. And then will play a nickel defense most of the night, but against the Bell Dozer, they'll go heavy and go with their base defense. If Oklahoma has designs on throwing it, this is the down, well, excuse me, third down. I think they come right back and go Bell Dozer again and try and follow Miller, 33, and Rutkowski, Rick 48. And another timeout called by Oklahoma. Two timeouts called already, and we're still in the first quarter. AM up 7 zip, but Oklahoma threatening. Referee Tom Zamorski pointed the wrong way. Actually, Texas AM called that last timeout. They had 12 men on the field. So that brings up a third down and goal at the one. Blake Bell remains in the game. Millard standing right next to him. And this feels like four down territory. Jaden Bird, who'd been a linebacker, comes in as an extra fullback. Here's Bell. He wants to throw it. Does he? Bell? Incomplete. And you said it, partner. They throw out of this formation. Wrinkles come into bowl game preparation when you have a month. Texas A&M had planned for it, and I was surprised they went there because usually the throw down is second down. This felt like four down territory. Bob Stoops wants to be physical. If they keep Bell Dozer out here this time, it's not a throw down. It's a run down with the big fella following the beef. Fourth down and goal at the one. Oklahoma going for it. Bell 
flag on the play. And he doesn't get in. And this will be a false start against OU. And if that's the case, kick the field goal. Before the snap, false start, 82 in the offense. Five-yard penalty, good fourth down. Could not be a better inside the five stand for Texas A&M, even if this ball goes through the post. Oklahoma went with their bread and butter, bell dozer, we're going to be physical, run you over. They tried to fake them out with a pass. It didn't work. They didn't get it in with bell dozer running it twice, even if it goes through the pipes. This is a terrific stand for Texas A&M's defense early in the game. That brings on Michael Honeycutt into attempt a 23-yarder. And good. Oklahoma on the board. However, Bob Stoops' team settles for three. Stopped on the one. Back to the 77th AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic. Texas A&M with a 7-3 lead. And you know what I think we saw in that first goal line stand? The value of SEC football for Texas A&M. The belldozer package, heavy package, they see that a lot in the SEC. Big guys wanting to run the football in short yardage situations. They work against it just about every week now. Trey Williams bobbles it, and he'll take a knee in the end zone. Now this January, the network that reinvented the television thriller has done it again. Kevin Bacon comes to Fox in a groundbreaking new series. Can one man stop a serial killer and his deadly followers? The following premieres Monday, January 21st on Fox. Well, if it's Kevin Bacon, <laughs> Kevin Bacon. <laughs> he can do it. Let me tell you something. He can be a bad man when he wants to be. And they're going to need him on that one. And speaking of bad men, the tempo and pace that AM opened this game with, Oklahoma's got to find a way to settle in and get up to speed with them. First down and 10 from the 25. Manziel out of the gun. Manziel all day to throw the football. Swoop is there and complete. Johnny Manziel put a little too much hot sauce on that football. And Oklahoma defense coordinator Mike, Sto Mike Stoops drew up man free coverage. Everyone locked up man with a free safety in the middle to go over the top. But because he had so much time, Swope was able to make not just a second move, but a third move, and was wide open, and Manziel just missed it. Second down and 10. Manziel, near side, finds Mike Evans, and Evans goes down at the 31. Aaron Colvin hanging on to make the tackle. Most teams, when they play Texas A&M, like to play zone. Why? It keeps everyone's eyes back towards the quarterback and Johnny Manziel. But early tonight, a lot of man-to-man -man and man-free coverage by Oklahoma with defensive backs running with their backs to Manziel chasing receivers. Third down and four the 31. Manziel over the middle. Caught this time, Swope. A big first down as he gets to the 47. That's a 16-yard gain, and the Aggies will get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Tony Jefferson with the tackle. And those are the types of throws that Manziel is deadly on. Deeper balls is where he struggles, less than 40% way down the field. But intermediate, he'll cut you to shreds at over 70%. Slow, beautiful catch. And he'll get inside Oklahoma territory. Gabe Lynn there to usher him out of bounds. And notice how much success he's having early, Gus, working to the perimeter, throwing the football. Not a super tall guy in the pocket is Manziel. The rest of it will come in time. But right now, I think he's more comfortable looking to the outer edges where the throwing lanes are clearer for him. Second down to three. Ball start. Number 70, the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. That's Cedric O'Brahe, offensive guard, who next year, if Luke Jokel decides that he wants to go on and move on to the NFL, he could easily move out and play left tackle. 
It's actually what he was groomed for when he got to AM, but he's so talented, they had to find a place for him to play early. So they're moving back, second and eight. Manziel up the sideline. Incomplete. Kenrick McNeil, the intended receiver, he did have a step on Julian Wilson. Wilson working with him and keeping the arm on him. He's actually pretty fortunate because that arm inside stayed on Kenrick McNeil. So in a sense, he got away with one, able to ride McNeil down the sideline and keep contact and get an incompletion out of it. So that brings up third down and eight. A&M is number one at FBS at converting third down. 55%. They're three of three tonight. Here's Johnny Manziel improvising. Tosses it. Caught by Molina, but he won't pick up the first down. Dematre Hurst with the open field tackle. Take a look. They actually went to a spy defense this time. Tony Jefferson, everyone else is man to man with a blitz. See Jefferson trying to mirror Manziel? He's the spy on him. Manziel didn't have the room to go. Hits it to Molina and a good tackle by Hurst to present the first down and force the first punt of the night by a and &M. Oklahoma gets off the field, not giving up any points. So Ryan Emerson comes into punt. He's standing at the 41. Jalen Saunders back deep. There's a Darren Bennett end over end kick. And a beautiful one at that. Downed at the six. A 39-yard punt. Now let's take a look at what's coming up on Fox Sunday, the wild card game. Two of the great young quarterbacks in the NFL, Russell Wilson for Seattle, RG3 for the Redskins. And they will do battle Sunday at 4 Eastern time on Fox. <laughs> we're putting two of the rookie sensations against each other right out of the gate. Boom, boom, boom. Fireworks coming up in that game. Landry Jones taking over first down and 10. He'll throw it near side. Kenny Still is great reception as he's driven down by Dustin Harris. Not have been a better thrown football. I mean, that was perfect rhythm. Ball's out of his hand. Perfect spot for Kenny Stills. Andrew Jones off to a great start. 10 yard gain. Here's a handoff. Williams breaks it back. He'll get a yard maybe on the play as the Shazer Everett trips him up. Looked like he had slipped in the backfield a little bit or at the line of scrimmage and gone down to a knee and kept matriculating the ball up the field. He gained a little bit extra. No one caught him. And maybe it was just my eyes deceiving me. Second and nine. room on the right side for Damian Williams. He gains eight on the play as Howard Matthews, the safety, brings him down. He's third and short, and it appears Landry Jones will stay on the field for this call as opposed to the belldozer package. Would not be surprised to see him actually throw for it here instead of running it inside, even out of this tight formation. Williams alone set back. Miller in motion. Play fake. Jones underneath. And a first down, Jalen Saunders. Dustin Harris there defensively for AM. and Like how they showed that tight bunch formation, tight package. Here we come with the run, Millard in motion. Look out, guys. Fake it, throw, pick up the first down. Josh Heifel trying to mix and match a little bit and break a few tendencies after what AM has scouted for the last month. Jones, 8 of 10, 59 yards to start from the 31. AM showing blitz. Here they come. Oklahoma picks it up. Jones 
throws a strike to guess who? Kenny Stills. Twice now on this drive, look at Stills getting not just one foot down, which you need in college, but both. Gains eight, now Williams pushes the pile forward and picks up the first down. Yeah, twice in this drive, they've gone to that speed out between 10 and 15 yards. Ball's right on target, right on time for Kenny Stills. Third year starter, Kenny Stills. He was a freshman All-America. Father Kenny played safety for the Packers and Vikings. First down at 10 of the 42. I think he asked the old man if he can go out and cover him. I think he did. <laughs> I think he challenges him in the backyard. Jones underneath. And very nice Oakfield tackle by Tony Hurd. Justin Brown thought he had running room, but Hurd Jr. right there on the play. They try and influence you to move outside, but Hurd will come back inside, reads it totally. He's the nickelback. Saw the play from inside out. Moved himself into perfect position. Textbook tackle in open field. Second and eight. Jones. Quick strike underneath. He has his receiver. Beautiful job as Neal makes the catch. The freshman from St. Louis and picks up 13. And how about the leap players make from the end of the season to the bowl game, especially if you have a week, excuse me, a month of practices. Ron Neal, we see Oklahoma 23 plays to Texas A&M's 14. Ron Neal, that's his fifth catch of the season. I'll bet that extra bowl work has really helped his confidence and helped him really have an understanding of the offense. But Landry Jones is starting to warm up, folks. Seven completions in a row. This is their second offensive drive. First down and 10 now. And you know, we, we really haven't seen yet, and this is a nice spot on the field, push the Texas A&M secondary a little bit deeper so you can continue to throw the underneath stuff. They haven't taken a strike downfield yet. And he still is a receiver at the bottom of your screen. Here's the delayed handoff to Damian Williams. Spencer Neely with the tackle. And that may take us to the end of the first quarter. And what a quarter it's been. Fast pace, fast break, college football. Exactly what we expected to see, especially from AM. And how about Oklahoma starting to settle in now? Somewhere Chip Kelly is watching this game and smiling, enjoying it in a big old easy chair. 7-3. Seven to three, a and with the lead, but Oklahoma driving, and here's tonight's score comparison. Look at the rushing yardage. a and hasn't been a super rushing team other than Johnny Football this year, but they got off to a great start, largely because of him. Total yards almost a wash. Look at the third downs. Both offenses very successful early, but the explosive plays all on the side of a and Johnny Football attributable. Second down and eight at the 41. Good strike, Justin Brown breaks the tackle, gets up the sideline, and he's close to a first down. And I like the way, even though Oklahoma is a fast-paced offense, it seems like they have different gears for this fast-paced offense. Different tempos, different speeds. During the break, we talked with Petros Papadakis, who's on our sideline, and that was what we discussed. What are they doing with the pace? And this pace is helping slow down Texas A&M's offense and the fast pace of Johnny football. And here comes the belldozer again on third and short. I'd like to see him hit it right away and not hesitate so much when he gets the snap because of the knifing defense of AM. and And they run it straight ahead. Bell with all sorts of running room. Great play face. Miller sold it, and he gains 12 yards. Steven Terrell with the tackle. Sold it. Sold, sold, sold. How beautiful was that? First down. They pitch it. Play. And they get to the line of scrimmage so quickly, you can't get a replay in both these teams. And you like how fast they went again by leaving Blake Bell in the game to run the next play as opposed to changing up after the first down and killing a little momentum. 
Nicely coached by Josh Heupel, the offensive coordinator and his offensive staff. Keep it going, then after the first play, you get Landry Jones back in. A lot of huffing and buffing now from the Texas A&M defense. Second and five at the 18. Miller, the motion man. Landry Jones turns, finds his receiver, Saunders. And Saunders inside the 15. Dustin Harris stops him. Nine straight completions and really not much heat in the pocket for either Landry Jones or Johnny Manziel. Balls out of their hands quickly, especially with Landry Jones, but the pressure has not been able to get home against either quarterback in the early going. So a third down and short, Jones remains in the game. Jones to the sideline. Beautiful strike to Kenny Stills with a first down. Kenny Stills with his fifth catch. He came into this game three catches away from becoming the fourth player in Oklahoma history with 200 career catches. And he has it. And he and Landry Jones have that bench route down pat, that speed out. That ball's gone before Kenny Stills is making and finishing his cut. And it's right on target. So first down and goal at the eight and eight yard line. Jones, play fake, in the end zone, Stills, and out of play. The Shazer Everett standing right there for AM. The guy they have not found so far throwing the football is number 18, Jalen Saunders. Slot receiver. Tough to tough to get to cover him in this type of type of situation. Look for him now. 16th play of this drive. Second and goal at the eight. They'll hand it off. Williams. And on the bottom of the pile, Demontre Moore with the tapper. And that brings up third down and goal. Bending but not breaking, holding Oklahoma to three on their first drive. Landry Jones with time. Jones in the end zone. It could lead. Trey Miller got two hands on it, just couldn't hold on. Jonathan Stewart covering. No real pass rush, but you know what came into play? The back end of the end zone, because Trey Miller's behind the secondary, but because he's at the back of the end zone, he can't run farther. So the back of the end zone becomes an extra defender for Texas A&M, and instead of an easy toss because he's behind everyone, it turns into a tough pass from Landry Jones. So Michael Honeycutt, good from 23 in his first attempt. This one will be from 24 yards away. Tress Ways is holder. And he nails it. 18 play drive, but Kevin Sumlin will take it. Oklahoma settles for three once again. Welcome back to Cowboy Stadium, second quarter of the 77th AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic. Texas A&M with a seven to six lead. Johnny Manziel getting the Aggies on the board with a 23-yard scramble for a touchdown. Landry Jones has led Oklahoma to two field goals on two extremely long drives. One a 16-play drive, the other an 18-play drive. Oklahoma with 32 offensive plays, Texas A&M with 14. Yet the Aggies lead by a digit. 11.41 to go in the second quarter. Trey Williams 
will get a shot from the goal line. And Williams continues to run forward and finally brought down at around the 13. Javon Harris with the tackle as Menzel prepares to come onto the field. One of the great stories surrounding this game, the relationship between Kevin Sumlin and Bob Stoops. Kevin Sumlin coached for Bob Stoops for five years, first as a tight ends coach and offense, excuse me, special teams coordinator, later became co-offensive coordinator, and has been around championship teams before going off to being the head coach of the University of Houston. They're still very close, knew each other as assistants when they recruited against each other, and very good symbiotic relationship, bouncing ideas off of each other in the coaching ranks. First down and 10 of the 14. Play fake, Manziel. Fires underneath and Mike Evans. Great reception, picks up nine. Aaron Colvin there defensively. Just wait until Mike Evans actually learns how to play wide receiver. Played basketball most of his high school career. And so that ball deflected at the line of scrimmage. Looks like Julian Wilson got a hand on it. As you take a look at the time of possession, the most glaring stat thus far. And Texas A&M does not care about time of possession. They care about drives and points. Oklahoma loves time of possession. Why? Because number two is on the field now. When Oklahoma has the ball, he's over on the sidelines. Third down and one for Mansell and company. Now hand it to Williams. And looks like he picks up the first down. And you move him just enough to give your running back a crease. And he slips inside Ibuloye, number five, and dives forward. Bob Stoops doesn't like the spot at all, but he's not going to win that one. Kind of similar to his mentor, Steve Spurrier, not liking the spot in his game on January 1. And Zell to throw it. Now in trouble, decides to run. Johnny Manziel gets to the 33. Javon Harris stops him, but I don't think Oklahoma, when this game began, especially on the touchdown run, understood how fast Johnny Manziel actually is. They used Trevor Knight, a backup quarterback, to be T football, as they called it. But he can't be Johnny Manziel. He can't be that fast, that quick, and totally simulate what you get on game night, as you just pointed out. A Heisman Trophy winner, four carries, 60 yards already, second and two. Manziel to the sideline. This ball caught. Watch it cool. Nice yards after the catch. Harris finally stops him, but he gains 12. And again in the passing game, working the perimeters and the slants. Best routes for Johnny Manziel. The one he tried to throw across the middle, batted back at him. Manziel running it straight ahead with the crease. Manziel at the 40. Needs a block. Manziel in space. Manziel still going. Johnny football. 45 yards. And they keep the pressure on you because they immediately get up on the line of scrimmage ready to play. Manziel now five carries, 105 yards, and a touchdown. And we still have 9.46 to play in the first half. Here's a pitch. Williams dives. And he stepped out of bounds. Trey Williams, extra effort. Nice little toss. Williams sees the pylon, is going to make the leap for it. Steps out of bounds right there. So that's where the ball should be spotted before he takes off. And tries to put the S on his chest, getting into the end zone. Second down and four. At the five-yard line. Play fake. Manziel back in the end zone. And he'll dump it away. Swope, closest man of the football. Mike Stoops, the D coordinate, defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, just said, forget it. I'm not letting this kid dictate on this play went right after him. Either he's going to have to run it or throw it, but make a quick decision. Gabe Lynn immediately in his grill, making him throw it deep over the end, end zone. Will they blitz again on this play, third down and four? I think they bring pressure and try and knife inside with the defensive lineman. You're trying to get upfield and into the gaps. 
AM calls a timeout. They're second back after this. Texas A&M, however, a big third down and four coming up for the Aggies at the Oklahoma five-yard line. How about Johnny Manziel with these scrambles? But don't be mistaken, his offensive line gives him enough time initially, and then they help him stretch out a play by actually getting a second and third block that helps open up gaps for the scrambles of Johnny Manziel. Everyone thinks he scrambles because he doesn't have time. Oh, he has plenty of time, and then they help him extend it. Third down and four at the five. Manziel in the shotgun. Manziel reversing. Throws off his back foot. Oh, he's picked off. Javon Harris. Oski. And Oklahoma has it. Malcolm Kennedy bobbles the football and they're jumping up and down on the Oklahoma sideline. First turnover of the game. Welcome back. Only the ninth interception of the season for Johnny Manziel. And that ball should have been caught. That ball was in the hands of Malcolm Kennedy, but, I, but it felt like Johnny Manziel thought that Oklahoma jumped into the neutral zone and he had a free play. When he scrambled around, threw it across the middle, the sense was that he thought they were in the neutral zone. I've got a free play. It doesn't matter. Turned out they were not in the neutral zone. No flag. Malcolm Kennedy, the ball bounced off his hands to Javon Harris with the interception, a pass that should have been caught by the youngster from AM. So the Sooners take over at their own 20. Play fake. Landry Jones dumps it this time. It's his, to his running back, Damian Williams, out of the backfield. And Williams will gain about eight and a half on the play. Gus, what is it about these San Diego backs? Damian Williams being one of the latest. Ready play as well. A guy named Ricky Williams that played at Texas that was pretty good from San Diego. Also a guy named Marcus Allen. Our colleague. Saunders, first down. As he gets out of bounds, Tony Hewer Jr. escorting him out of bounds. As you noted, the first big tur first turnover of the game comes through courtesy of the Oklahoma defense, helping their offense now move the ball. Jones looking for Kenny Stills. And incomplete. A flag on the play, though. Steven Terrell covering. Fans upset, I believe, because it came late. Pass interference against the defense, number 21. 15 yards, the previous spot, automatic first down. And sometimes the flag comes late because it takes time to get it out of your pocket. But he had the call the whole way. And the reason that the flag came down was on the inside move by Stills. The hand got inside onto the receiver, impeding his ability to cut inside for the football. No argument from Steven Terrell. So a first down, now at the 47-yard line for Oklahoma. And I like the deep ball. Make the A&M cornerbacks and DBs be aware that you may try and push it past them so they can't just sit on the short and intermediate routes. Jones up the center this time, hands it off. Williams breaks it back, still on his feet. It's the sideline, and out of bounds at the 45. That's a terrific run. Gain of eight. Everett pushes him out of bounds. Damian Williams. Power running. Here they go again. Williams. And he picks up a first down. Woo. Howard Matthews delivering the wood on that play. And Williams bounces up. That's called bringing the wood right there. And Damian Williams was up to the task. Man on man meeting at the sideline. First down. At the Texas A&M 41. a and defense has been on the field a lot in the first half. Will that pay dividends for Oklahoma 
as this game moves into the second half. And a timeout call by OU. Lane Johnson couldn't hear the call, the left tackle. 7.58 to play. 7-6. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. By the Nikon One, a different kind of Nikon. And by Pizza Hut. Make it great. 7-6, to six, a and here at the Cotton Bowl. But Oklahoma driving once again in the spectacular views from just above the field is from our AT&T Skyview camera. And folks, if you have a bucket list and you're a sports fan, <laughs> you got to get to this stadium. One of the most incredible spectacles that you'll see. <laughs> it's awe-inspiring even when it's not filled. Now when you have this sellout, I think it's a super sellout tonight. Over the number. Incredible. 85,000 tickets sold. First down at 10 of the 41. Saunders, the motion man. Here's a handoff. Brittany Clay. Brittany Clay. Take it down to Montre Moore. Is that the first time you've called the monster's name besides I'm... the penalty early? I think so. You remember the penalty early we stepped off sides? It hasn't been much, but how about those 80 tackles? That looks good. Let me tell you how good it is. He led his team in tackles, he led the SEC defensive linemen in tackles. The first guy to lead his team in tackles at AM as a defensive lineman since Sam Adams. Remember Big Sam Adams? Yes, I do. Played for the wrecking crew. Second and 14 at the 45. Andrew Jones steps up in the pocket, delivers, and it's intercepted. Dustin Harris with the convoy. Harris breaks it back. Harris finally goes down inside OU territory. A 23-yard return. So we have our second turnover of the ball game. a ms defense matches Oklahoma's turnover for turnover, takeaway for takeaway. So let's take a look. This is Tony Hurd, the nickelback. Here's the linebacker. Let's see where Harris comes from. I think the corner position to your left. Inside, he lets the receiver. He let the receiver go in here, and then he retreated. Saw the football and fell back into coverage. Well played by Dustin Harris. That's what coach is talking about: putting your eyes in the proper place and following your keys. Oklahoma defense having problems getting lined up. Here's the reverse. McNeil wants to throw it and caught. Mike Evans. Evans 39 inch vertical leap comes right into play as he goes up and snatches the football for a huge gain downfield. First down at the OU 28. Molina with a lay. Molina cuts inside down at the five. Uh oh. They're starting to play some ball here in Texas. AM. Punching Oklahoma back. And the, what the top tackler for Oklahoma, Tony Jefferson, limping after that play. But the right side of the AM offensive line, Cedric Abreye, Brahe, and Jake Matthews opened up a gaping hole. Jefferson has been nursing a high ankle sprain. First down and goal at the five. Manzel rolling. Manzel. Touchdown. When he gets to the corner, they have what they call either or plays, either throw it or run it. Many times, him running it, the way better option. Extra point up and good. AM capitalizing on the interception. 
Johnny Manziel, his second rushing touchdown of the evening. After Dustin Harris's seventh career interception, Johnny Manziel and the a and offense score again. Three-play drive covering 48 yards. They scored 43 seconds. Now we have a 14-6 game here at the Cotton Bowl. They capitalized on their takeaway. Oklahoma takes it away. No point score. Roy Finch, Brennan Clay back deep. This will be Clay. Brings it out of the end zone. And Clay close to the 20-yard line before being stopped. All right, time now for our Miller Lite trivia question. Texas A&M averaged 44.8 points per game this season, second highest in SEC history. Who holds the all-time record? My guess is that that person and team has a tie to Bob Stoops. See, that's a very nice way of not letting the answer out because we know you know the answer. I, I hope I know the answer, but my guess is that Bob Stoops has a pretty good tie <laughs> to that team program. Oklahoma with the football at their own 17. Andrew Jones to the sideline. Long throw, Damian Williams makes the catch. Dives forward, Hurd Jr. with the tackle. Jones, 17 of 22, 117 yards, and an interception. Second and four. Jones, this time to Saunders. First down. Time now to join another member of our team on the sideline, Petros Papadakis. Petros, his pace is crazy. And Oklahoma's got to keep it up, guys. This is their advantage. Keep that AM defense tired. Play fake, Jones on the roll, fires on the run, and he's got Kenny Stills. Petros, continue your thought. Well, they called a timeout in the last series, and they got stopped for a short gain on a run, and then Landry threw the pick. That gave AM an advantage to catch their breath. They need to keep this pace with the short passes. Here's a handoff to Williams. He'll run into the pile. Kenny Stills loses his helmet, so he'll have to step off the field for a play. And I think where you're going, Petros, is the 16-play drive, the 18-play drive. Manziel's not on the field. You're tiring out the Texas A&M defense. The downside for Oklahoma so far, though, is that they've had to kick two field goals. They haven't gotten the ball in the end zone. When A&M touches it, the likelihood of a touchdown much higher, thus the difference in the game. So on third down and two, Landry Jones trots off. Blake Bell in the game. The heir apparent for the starting role starting tomorrow. Watch AM try and knife in the defensive line and get upfield against him to try and stack it up. So some confusion for charge Oklahoma. Time out, Oklahoma. It's their last charge time out of the half. And with under out. five minutes to go. OU now out of timeouts. And we called a lot of Texas A&M games last year. As a matter of fact, the last game we called in College Station, Missouri, coming back to beat the Aggies. But the most noticeable difference from my vantage point partner is this Texas A&M defense. They play a SEC style of defense this year. And what they've done is, remember last year, they were somewhere around 115 to 120 in total defense. Gave up a ton of yards throwing because that's Big 12 style. The SEC style helps some because you don't run as many plays. You're not throwing it as much. But they do a lot of periods that are very physical in practice to go against SEC style teams, even though their offense and their style at A&M is spread it out, throw it a lot more than run it. But Mark, me, Mark, uh, yeah, Mark Snyder and his defense spend a lot of time being physical in practice, and that's been the jump for this team. Third down and two. Landry Jones back in. 
Jones fires. Oh, what a beautiful catch by Jalen Saunders in heavy traffic. So on third and two, they get 15. And that was a counter play. They've run that formation in, 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 in motion and thrown screens out of it much of the evening. That time they showed it and threw it downfield. Jones will throw it again. Under pressure and he gets rid of it. Now he's in the pocket. The referee is determining and checking. And now the linesman helps him and tells him there's someone in the vicinity. Thus no intentional grounding. Good coordination between the referee and his linesman to make sure. Holding 29 of the defense against an eligible player. 10 yard penalty, first down. And that's to Shazer Everett. So everything worked well. There's Everett to the top, bottom of your top of your screen there, 29, working a 19 Brown. But was the ball in the air? Because it, it as I understand it, you can manhandle them until that ball's in the air. Maybe the ball was in the air with Landry Jones, and that's what they were determining as he had his hands on him as the ball was being released. That's the only thing I can go with. Because it sure looked like good coverage and him just knocking him down downfield. First down at the end of 38 for Oklahoma. Play in motion. Jones. All day winds up. Jump ball. Incomplete. Kenny Sills, the intended receiver. Dustin Harris. Terrific defense. As he breaks it up. He had a team high. Ten breakups coming into this game. And, and the fans are upset. The first push came from Kenny Stills in the back of Dustin Harris. They end up with a no call, but that's part of the evolution of the game we've seen where quarterbacks will throw it up against tight coverage because they trust their receivers. Kenny Stills gained a little bit of an advantage. He was not flagged for it. Second down and ten. Jones handing it off. Clay making people miss. Gavin Stansberry finally brings him down. And when we look at the explosion plays of Texas A&M, five of them of more than 20 yards, seven points off of the one turnover. Oklahoma wearing A&M's defense out with 45 offensive plays, but only two field goals having gotten into the end zone. So a big third down and nine at the 37. Saunders in motion. Here's Jones under pressure. Screen. Play with room. Play. And he picks up the first down of the 25. Great call by Josh Heifel. And Landry Jones, he sold it. An 11-yard pickup on third and nine. And Josh Heifel counted on the tendencies of Mark Snyder, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M. What's his MO? Pressure. He loved to get after the quarterback. Use the pressure against Texas A&M with the screen and picks up the first down. First down and 10 of the a 17, 27 rather. This drive started at the 17. Here comes a blitz. Clay breaks it inside and picks up a nice chunk. That'll be five. Steven Jenkins and Jonathan Stewart combining on the tackle. And Petros was talking about how many plays Oklahoma's running, the tempo, the pace. Texas A&M trying to counter now with rushing defensive linemen in and out of the game. They do have them tired, as Petros has noted. Second and six at the 23. Andrew Jones. He finds his receiver, Shepard. And Shepard out of bounds inside the 10. Sterling Shepard, impressive freshman from Oklahoma City. The Shazer Everett with a saving tackle. Shepard, a legacy at Oklahoma. His father, Derek, also wore number three here at Oklahoma. Recently passed away, was in the coaching profession. He wears his dad's number. And Tony Hurd jumped the wrong side of that pass, taking a gamble and paid for it. Look at Oklahoma. Pay it off with a touchdown. They've settled for two field goals. First down and goal of the eight. 
Jones in the corner. Incomplete. Kenny Stills. It would have been a tough catch, but it's one he normally would have hauled in. And he says, my bad, and I agree with him. All right, because they work on this back shoulder fade pass. Mm. And they do this all the time. That's not him putting his body in a spot it hasn't been in before. That's a very well thrown football. Second down and goal of the eight. Jones. This time he hands it off to Clay. And Clay will get close to the five. Matre Moore. Jonathan Mathis defensively for AM. Now third down and goal. Is this four down territory? I don't think so because of where we are in the game. Whole second half left to play. A lot of it will determine if they end up with fourth inside the one, they might consider it, but otherwise, it's not. 13th play of the drive, third down and goal from the six. Jones scrambling. Jones looking in the end zone. Touchdown. Landry Jones finds Justin Brown. And the Sooners pay it off. And and don't ex and don't expect them to go for two here. It is way early in the game for them to chase points. Kick the extra point. Make it 14-13. But partner. Johnny Manziel is the elusive one in this game, correct? Yes. How about Landry Jones getting outside of the chaos of the pocket, extending the play, and picking up the touchdown with his arm, but his feet led him to it. The evolution of Landry Jones this year increased in the pocket. Extra point up and good. 116 remaining in the first half. Landry Jones, the senior, making plays. Landry Jones, 23 of 30, 175 yards. A touchdown now, along with an interception. And OU pulls to within one with 116 remaining. Now Cotton Bowl record 23 completions in the first half. Trey Williams brings it out of the end zone. Williams, a flag thrown as he crosses the 20. Aaron Colvin with the tackle on special teams. During the return, holding number 36, the receiving team. 10 yards for spot of the foul. First down. And that's Donnie Bags. So let's pay off our trivia question. Texas A&M averaged 44.8 points per game this season. Second highest in SEC history. Who holds the all-time mark? The old ball coach and the Florida Gators. And you know who his defensive coordinator was on that team. That's right. One Bob Stoops, now head coach here at Oklahoma. <laughs> you, know, you know what Steve Spurs advice was all the time? Can you just give me the ball back, please? <laughs> First down at 10 of the 11. Manziel drops it off, looking for Mike Evans, and incomplete. And how about the trust they're showing in Johnny Manziel here in this situation? About a little more than a minute to go, backed up in your own territory, throwing the football here. Ball pops up, you have a turnover, that's a tough play, but they trust the youngster who won the Heisman Trophy. Second and ten. Manziel swings it out. Smoke. And he's pushed out of bounds, close to the 20. Clock stops, 57 seconds. And now Mike Stoops has a decision to make, Gus. Third down here. Do you play them for the run to try and get the first down and keep the clock moving and maybe bring an extra guy? Or do you just go ahead and play static and not make a mistake on the back end? Manziel handing it off. No, play fake. Manziel running the football. He fooled me on that play, gets to the 30. 
you and I are not the first fooled by Johnny Manziel and just think he's a freshman. There'd be a lot of people fooled by that young man. Lag on the play, though, on the far side at the 18. Illegal formation against the offense. Five men in the backfield. Five yards from the previous spot. Still repeat the down. So in some of your formations, people have to remember who's on the line of scrimmage, who's off if you're a receiver. They had too many people off the line of scrimmage, thus the penalty. So instead of third and one, it'll be third and six. Six penalty of the game for Texas A&M. You have to have seven people on the line of scrimmage on each snap in some form or another. I'd be aware of quarterback draw here with Manziel. Fires to the far side, Swope with it with a first down, and he is knocked out of bounds by Javon Harris. Looks like he picked it up, though. Javon Harris delivering a lick. But a first down for the Aggies. At the 21. Ryan Swope, their slot receiver number 25 in white has been relatively quiet in the first half. Missed a big opportunity with him on a double-triple move early in the game. He's their all-time leader in receptions with 244 coming into this game. 79 yards away from becoming their career yardage leader as well. Coming into this game, he's got four catches for 38 yards. Manziel, quarterback draw, bottled up. Now hits the sideline, and he'll get on the ball. I need to talk to him and Kevin Sumlin. About what? Because we said quarterback draw one play ago. <laughs> Can we get in sync here? Can you help? Can you help us out a little bit, Coach? <laughs> Manziel, though, already over 100 yards in the first half. Record for a quarterback in the Cotton Bowl for the first half. Second and six. No throw. Sideline. And incomplete. No flag on the play. Swope, the intended receiver. At first blush, Oklahoma may be fortunate. Julian Wilson on the coverage, getting the Swope, who goes off the field now. Did he get their account early? That's what the AM fans are saying. It's Swope. Look at the play. Ball. A case could be made that he's into the legs of Ryan Swope before the ball gets there, but it is a bang-bang play. That's tough for the official on the spot. I really don't it's, To me, there's not too much of an argument because it could have gone either way. Manziel, in, under pressure, steps up, tosses it up, and incomplete. Mike Evans, the intended receiver, with six seconds to play in the first half. So on fourth down, Manziel coming off the field, talking to his coach. Swope still on the sideline, being checked out by the trainers from Texas A&M. Now they help him up. Looks like he fell awkwardly. An interesting time here with six seconds to go. You might think about going for the block here if you're Oklahoma. Epperson sends it away. Good hang time and fair caught at the 37. And that's the end of the first half, but a big first half for Johnny Manziel, 188 yards in total offense and two touchdowns. Let's go to Aaron in L.A. Guys. How can you stop when it's everything you dream and it's so far left to run? How can you quit when it's all you've ever wanted and you don't know what's to come? You try so hard, it's what you play this game for, and this could be all you ever wanted. I'm sorry. And welcome back to the at and Cotton Bowl Classic. That was Time Fly's new song, Worth It to start the third quarter here in Arlington. 14-13, A&M 
leading Oklahoma. Gus Johnson along with Charles Davis. CD, did you expect more scoring in the first half? Well, with the way things went for Oklahoma down the stretch this year, where people were putting up more points, remember the West Virginia game? The answer is yes with Johnny Manziel. But I thought that Mike Stoops and his defense did an excellent job in the first half containing them, even though they gave up two touchdowns. Got off the field a couple times and a turnover. They'll take 14. Johnny Manziel did a terrific job rushing the football in the first half. Seven runs, 113 yards. His vision is incredible. How about the balance on the side? And look at him. He makes so many people miss that I'm often struck by the thought that many defenses think that they are a man away from tackling him when in fact they're a man away from missing him. Way more times. That's what we're seeing with Johnny Manziel. As we take a look at the Pizza Hut first half statistics. Offensive plays, I think the 51 for Oklahoma could serve them well down the stretch if fatigue becomes a factor for AM's defense. But the explosive plays, five 20 yard plays, huge for Texas AM. That's how they like to play. All right, let's check in with Julie Alexandria downstairs. Hey, Gus. I just talked to Coach Sumlin. And Charles, to your point that you made earlier about the AMD getting worn down by OU, well, he said, We're not concerned. We'll be fine. We're leading the game. And then when I asked him what his biggest concern really was, he looked at me deadpan and said, You don't want to know. Just like that. <laughs> Actually, we do. <laughs> we would like to. Let's bring in Petros Papadakis. Guys, talking to Bob Stoops, he was very animated as always, and he said they're not trying to hold the ball and run a bunch of plays. They're just trying to move the ball down the field, and that's how things are going. When I asked him if he was happy about how his team has contained Johnny Football, he said no, but nobody's contained him so far this year. Well, Oklahoma will have the football to start the second half. Landry Jones leading Oklahoma into the end zone late in the second quarter to pull to within one. And this one fielded in the end zone by Brennan Clay. He'll take a knee. So Jones and the Sooners, no problem moving the football aside from the one interception but they did stall when they got into the red zone having to settle for three points twice but the touchdown right before the half getting six was monstrous for Oklahoma because now they don't go into the they didn't go into the locker room with doubts in their mind three field goals can we match points with Johnny football that touchdown with a one point difference it feels like we're starting this game from zero again to Oklahoma Jones 23 of 30 175 yards in the first half here's Shepard who had a big catch on that drive to close the first half which resulted in the touchdown Jonathan Stewart and Tony Hewitt Jr. with the tackle Damian Williams in the backfield. Gain of eight on the play. Second down and two. Here's a handoff. Williams, and he is roughed up and taken down. Stephen Jenkins grabbed him first. Lonzo Williams, number 83, was there also, who started tonight. A true freshman who's starting. And look at the cards over there. See all this? <laughs> that is all formations, play calls, all that in there. You have to know which card to read, and they designate it usually per quarter so that people can't steal their signs. Third down and four, the 31. They're seven of nine on third down conversions. Landry Jones to the sideline. I don't think he got enough. Damian Williams out of the backfield with the grab. And that should lead to a punt. Good observation, partner, on the sideline. You saw him try and stretch it out, but his feet were already out of bounds, and the official was all over the call, and it's too far to think about going for it here. Although in bowl games, what do you think about all the time? Wrinkles, trick plays. You've got to always be prepared. Everyone's had a month. They get bored. They start putting extra things in. So Oklahoma three and out on their opening drive of the second half. Dustin Harris back deep. First punt of the game for Tress Way at OU. 
Nice job by Tress Way as the ball dies at the 10 yard line. A 58 yard punt. So Johnny Manziel, 9 of 17, 75 yards in the first half. Seven carries, though, for 113 yards and two rushing touchdowns. And I understood what Bob Stoops told Petros Papadakis at halftime. He's not happy about how they contain him. You know why? Because Bob Stoops is a defensive guy at heart. Anytime you give up a yard, it hurts him. <laughs> That's not fun for him. He's a defensive guy. His brother Mike's a defensive guy. Their brother Mark, who is at Florida State, his defense quarter, now the new head coach at Kentucky, has them excited about something that's not basketball right now. Who knew? First down, Manziel on the keeper. And Manziel with all sorts of running room as he gets knocked out of bounds at close to the 23-yard line by Tony Jefferson. A 14-yard gain. And I think it's very interesting to see the evolution, Charles, of the undersized quarterback when you look at tradition no more no longer can you dismiss them and say they can't play in the game that they can't play at the higher levels now you're taking those talents and utilizing them Manziel floats one up watch it cool. <laughs> 35 yards and let's see how fast they want to play. Watch a coup to the bottom of your screen. Beats DeMontre Hurst off the line of scrimmage. Gains a step. And that ball's well thrown. Watch a coup goes back and gets it a little bit. Manziel rolls out of the pocket. Hits Swope. And Swope out of bounds at the 35. Javon Harris there. Good to see Swope back. Remember, he was hurt early, excuse me, late in the half on an attempted pass catch where he was hitting the legs and had to get extra attention. Nice to see him back on the field. Running around. Swope five catches, 45 yards. Second and three. Manzel. Near side. Swope again. When we watched Johnny Manzel practice the other day, if he threw the ball 70 times, it hit the ground maybe three times. Perfectly thrown ball again. And let's go back to the start of the game. Where does he like to throw it? Perimeter. Better sight lines, better vision. Deadly on those type of routes. First down and 10. And Zell bouncing it out. He'll take it himself. And out of bounds close to the first down mark. How about Manziel getting to the perimeter and getting outside and his receiver thinks he's still in play and then he turns around and gives that extra block to Manziel. I wonder if Manziel was able to point to him and let him know. Sometimes they have a code word to block and the receiver took care of it. First down and goal at the five. Here's the option. Manziel breaks it back. He's got the corner. Or does he? Great closing speed. Demontre Hurst. And a flag on the play. And and Manziel will even give him a little dap on that. And there should be a block in the back against Oklahoma. Illegal block in the back. It's number seven of the offense. Ten yards to spot the foul. First down. Watch a coup. That was seven on seven crime, wasn't it? No, excuse me. Let me take that back. Right here, seven. That's Wachaku. And who is that? Not. Oh, that's six. Demontre Hurst. And he still made the play. And he still makes the play. And it, in a sense, that block in the back helped propel him into the play as well. Well done by Demontre Hurst on the corner. Because I had Wachaku at seven. Tremaine Jacobs plays defense for Texas A&M. Where seven? No double number ramp for me. Oh, yeah, I guess I just did it, didn't I? <laughs> well, you're allowed a few mulligans when you do college football. A lot of double numbers. First down and goal now at the 16. Manziel, back side, makes two people miss. Early shifty, folks. And he submarines to the six, a nine-yard gain. What a frustrating run for these two men. 
Look at that. Two of the better defensive coordinators in college football. And I will say history. And their players are frustrated too. Two excellent shots, well defended, per proper call, and Johnny Football beats it anyway. Second and goal of the seven. Option. Molina. Touchdown. This Texas A&M offense knows how to keep you off balance. And now they put Oklahoma in a position, Gus, where now they're thinking anytime they come up empty on an offensive possession, which Oklahoma did on the first possession of this drive, you're thinking in the back of your mind, I may be giving up six on the other end. That's what they do to you with the pressure they put on you offensively. Extra point up and good. 10-26 to play in the third quarter. A&M. Takes over, scores on their first drive of the second half to take a 21 to 13 lead over OU. The running game very effective, especially from the quarterback position tonight for Texas A&M. They have 203 yards rushing. Johnny Manziel, 10 carries, 146 yards himself, averaging 15 yards per carry, along with his two rushing touchdowns. So after going three and out on their first drive in the second half, Oklahoma gives up a touchdown, and now they'll get the football back, down 21-13. And Clay takes a knee. 10-26 to play, third quarter. Here comes Landry Jones. But it's been Johnny Manziel, the Heisman winner, a redshirt freshman that's made a huge difference in this game. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by Dr. Pepper and Diet Dr. Pepper. Always one of a kind. 21-13, Texas A&M leading Oklahoma here at the Cotton Bowl. And the spectacular views from just across the field are brought to you by our AT&T Skyview camera. OU with it at the 25. Here's a handoff, Miller this time, and Miller almost broke away, but Steven Jenkins grabbed his ankle and brings the Bruising full back down. A two yard pickup, second and eight. And this is a very important drive for the Sooners, would you think? I really believe that they've got to start thinking to themselves empty possessions. You worry about how many extra points you give up because right now, Johnny Football is much more of a threat to put sixes on the board than threes. AM changing defenses as Oklahoma changes offenses. Another handoff to Miller, this time with running room. And every time Trey Miller touches the football, good things happen, but it seems like the Oklahoma offense seems to go away from him or tends to go away from him. Personally, I've had many express to me that they would wear him out. <laughs> I'd be touching it, running it, throwing it to him. But they have so many different weapons and are so multiple, they try and spread the touches out almost like a Princeton offense. Everyone gets to touch it on offense at Oklahoma. And that's worked quite well for them in so many, on so many different occasions. I think Trey Millard is a terrific weapon that, 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 that appears to deserve more touches of the football. And he really drove into Steven Jenkins. Jenkins walking off the field now they were checking out his shoulder remember Trey Miller is 6'2 256 pounds took a little extra time to get off too. probably smart football by Steven Jenkins 
Get your guys a little extra rest rather than popping up and getting to the sideline immediately. A little bit of extra time to help his defense. Third down and one of the 34. Jones will throw it on third down. And incomplete. Shepard, the intended receiver. And that's the difference between this Oklahoma football team and the teams of the past with Barry Switzer. On third down and one, they throw it. Not nearly the threat to line up and, and, and go after it unless you see the belldozer package in. You think much more of them throwing it on third and, and one or two, you know, anything longer than a yard, inside of a yard. You feel like they're going to throw it a little bit more than they're going to run it, and you play accordingly. Terrific break on the football by Tony Hurd. Back-to-back -back three and outs for OU. Dustin Harris back deep. And he has it at the 10. 8.57 to play, third quarter. Here comes Manziel. All right, let's take a look at the Nissan Heisman recap. Johnny Manziel was the first freshman to win the Heisman Trophy, and along the way, he set an SEC record for total yards in the season. He also set the FBS record for rushing yards by a freshman quarterback. And Manziel now with 282 total yards in this game. He averages 383. That's more than 41 FBS teams on first down. Manziel throws a strike and a first down. Malcolm Kennedy. There's one part of his game he'll seek to continue to upgrade and polish for Johnny Manziel. It's the deep ball. But intermediate and short, Accurate dart thrower. Finds his lanes, especially to the perimeters, getting outside of the tackle to tackle box, and puts it on his receivers quite well. First down and 10 at the 22. Near side, Kennedy again. And knocked out of play by Javon Harris. Terrific Harris tackle. Making a nice tackle there, yeah. Open field. You and I both know that open field tackle is awfully tough to do. Shifty receivers and running backs, Malcolm Kennedy. Harris takes him down. Second and 11. Loss of one on the play. Manziel. Ah, what time. Manziel, what a throw. Kennedy, but even better. This offensive line for Texas A&M, they look like pros. And look at number 61, Patrick. Patrick Lewis in the middle. See, Matthew 75 on the end, but Lewis in the middle makes everything go for them. Even calls the protections for Johnny Football. Manziel, Evans across the field, and he makes the grab. Mike Evans. Now watch Lewis 61 get to the line of scrimmage quickly with 312 pounds. He's going to set the line calls and the protections and get things in motion. For Manziel, takes a lot of pressure off of a redshirt freshman quarterback. One less thing for him to do, just let Johnny Football be Johnny Football. Now option. And Manziel will get positive yardage. And you got to talk about the two tackles on this team as well. Luke Jolton out in the trophy winner, number 76, the left tackle. Right tackle, Jake Matthews, also a terrific player. About that record yardage total for Johnny Manziel. Those tackles you just talked about helped him accumulate a huge chunk this year. Underneath, smoke, first down. Now it's getting easy for Texas A&M. And Mark Snyder, the defensive coordinator for Texas A&M, told us in our meeting that if you practice against Manziel all the time, it's easier to call defenses in games because no other quarterback can do to you what he does to you in practice. This is what Mark Snyder gets to work against every day and why their defense has made a quantum leap in production. First down. This time it's Williams. Williams breaks a tackle. Touchdown, Aggies. 30 yards.
Texas A&M on both sides of the football. Opening this game up in the third quarter. 6.30 to play. And the extra point, no good. Taylor Bartlett pushing it wide. But the Aggies pounding it. Tony, w Trey Williams rather, Pater. The AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox is sponsored by AT&T. By UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. And by Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. 27-13, A&M trying to pull away here at the Cotton Bowl. As you take a look for Texas A&M, they've had some great drives to start the second half a 91 yard drive for a touchdown and an 89 yard drive for a touchdown on the other side Oklahoma with two three and outs to start the second half In today's football when you don't score you feel like that's a huge swing against you no points the other team gets their six seven so now you feel like this seven down that you didn't get seven they got that's 14 swing tough sledding this game now goes partner squarely on the shoulders of Oklahoma's offense on this drive to try and quell this momentum that A&M has built up Brennan Clay brings it out stays on his feet and finally dragged down at the 22 yard line by DeShazer Everett now, don't forget, folks, this January, the network that has reinvented the television thriller has done it again. Kevin Bacon comes to Fox in a groundbreaking new series. Can one man stop a serial killer and his deadly followers? The following premieres Monday, January 21st on Fox. Ball on the 22-yard line for Landry Jones. Jones swings it out, Saunders makes a first man miss, but finally wrapped up and taken down Stephen Terrell with the stop. He's a terrific story of redemption. Last year really struggled in pass coverage, as did the Aggies as a whole. Nearly the worst pass defense in the country. Lost his job. Arkansas particularly torched him. Got two interceptions against them this year. Sideline incomplete. Jones intended for Justin Brown. So that brings up a third down. And long. They need nine. Jones steps up in the pocket in trouble gets it away Justin Brown with the catch but let's see the spot and he will not have enough for the first down that yellow line is unofficial though Demontre Moore with pressure Justin Brown the sideline take a look he's out of bounds look where his foot was out and then came back in He was the first guy to catch it after going out of bounds without being forced out. I know he reestablished, but no one pushed him over the sideline. Rolling on the field, this player was short of a first down. The play is under further review. So without him being forced out, I don't believe he can be the first to come back in. So that should be an illegal touching call. See, he's out right there, okay? So now when he reestablishes back in, he's not eligible yet. Someone else would have to touch it first. Let's bring in Mike Herrera, who's actually in the booth with us this time. Mike, your thoughts on this uh, 
play. It's uh, good to be here with you, by the way, but it is a eligible receiver that went out of bounds, came back in in his first to touch the pass. Now, in college, it's not a five yard penalty, it's just a straight incomplete pass. So they'll reverse this to an incomplete pass and it'll be fourth down. He would have, if he had been forced over the sideline by a defender, Mike, and then reestablished. That's correct. He would have been okay. Then he's to okay. The football, and, but and no one touched him. That's correct. He went out on his own, so he can't come back in. So that so that would make it fourth down, correct? That's and, correct. The, and the loss of that yardage. They yeah, didn't, you they you didn't still would have had fourth down coming here, but you've got a significant yardage difference, which is why the uh, the replay official did stop it. The receiver stuck out of bounds. It was the first to receive the ball. Illegal touching, which is loss of down at the previous spot. The ball will be placed at the 23-yard line, fourth down. And that yardage difference is huge because at this stage of the game, Bob Stoops would probably think about going for it, clearly out of bounds as he reestablishes. See, but if they had made that play and made it fourth and that short, down 27-13, Johnny football operating. Here he has no choice because they don't get the yardage. He's got to kick the ball away due to field position. Menzel will get it again. Another empty possession for the Oklahoma offense. That's three straight to begin the second half. Is he checking where they replace the football or is it well, we can speculate all we want he'll tell us <laughs> when he's done he'll tell us Bob Stoops though a nightmarish third quarter three three and outs Fourth down at the 23-yard line, the right hash. Must have just been checking spot and yardage to make sure they reestablished it correctly. So Tress Way comes in. He'll punt from his own nine. And Dustin Harris is back deep, hovering around the 30. And the ball downed. Inside the 30 yard line. Johnny Manziel wins the Heisman Trophy as a redshirt freshman. And boy, did he go on a run. David Letterman in the top 10. Tonight show with Jay Leno. Met LeBron. A number of NBA stars. James Harden, fear the beard. Also played a little golf with the Jonas Brothers. But I think, you know, one of the most impressive things that he had a chance to do was present a tiny 12th man jersey to He's Megan green. Fox. That would be my highlight. <laughs> <laughs> There's Manziel running. Breaks a tackle. And out of bounds for 45. And look at the beauty of how he's handled all of this. All right, because Heisman Trophy winners don't generally come back and play this well after they've won the Heisman. There's so much extraneous stuff that oftentimes they're not at the top of their game. He's had no loss in that area. Picked up 18 yards on that play. Flushed out of the pocket. Delivers to Evans. Evans breaks the tackle and picks up the first down. And now you're seeing Oklahoma. They're tired. They're spent. And Manziel is close to breaking them. And they squandered the advantage that they had when they were Putting it on AM's defense, but not scoring enough points. 169 rush yards tonight, an ATT Cotton Bowl record by a quarterback. And we still have 446 and counting in the third quarter to go. Manziel fakes the option, turns, fires, swept, incomplete. Whoa, nice play by Javon Harris as he lays out and knocks it away. When you play spread offenses, Defensive coaches always preach to their players that every tackle could be a potential touchdown saving tackle because it's open field. In this case, this pass was a touchdown saving pass broken up by Javon Harris, who's had a terrific year at safety. Second and 10 of the 38. Manziel, that one thrown a little bit low for Malcolm Kennedy. 
But he says, my bad, I should have caught it. It appeared that he jumped, almost like the, he thought the ball was going to get into his body, and he was trying to keep it away from it. And the total yards this quarter, Texas A&M exploded. He sees 17 yards, the remnants of three straight three and outs for Oklahoma. Third and 10 to the 38. Manziel in the flats, he finds Molina. And Molina knocked out of bounds. And when you look at the stats for Texas A&M and their receiving core, everybody's got catches. Manziel does a terrific job of spreading it around. Now on fourth down, Kevin Sumlin and the Aggies are going for the throw. Stay on the field, too far for the field goal. Too short for the punt. Who would you rather have the football in their hands? Leave it with Manziel in the offense. <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and they get OU to call another timeout on defense. Leading 27 to 13 with 402 to go in the third quarter. Texas A&M considering going for it on fourth down. They like Taylor Bertolette's leg from longer distances, but he just missed an extra point. So I believe that Kevin Sumlin has thought to himself, I want to go for it anyway. He's given me a great opportunity. It's too far for a, too far really for a field goal in a lot of ways. Too short for a punt. And darn, that kid number two, he makes magic. Let's go for it. And let's try and put this thing away right now. Manziel on fourth and five. Got to heat him up if you're Oklahoma. You can't sit back. Manziel over the middle. Caught Swope with speed. Swope. Touchdown, Aggies. On fourth down. 33 yards. And another missed tackle in the secondary. Watch Swope working to the middle, working against number two, Julian Wilson. He has a chance to tackle him there. It's a first down, but it's not a touchdown. He misses, and Swope gallops into the end zone. And, and Texas A&M has firm control at this point. Ryan Swope came into this game as the all-time leader in receptions. He is now the all-time leader in yardage. With this 33-yard touchdown, the Texas A&M Aggies lead it big. 34-13, the third quarter has been a huge story in this game. It's all Texas A&M. As Finch takes a knee in the end zone, three three-and-outs for Oklahoma to start the second half and with 3.55 to go. A&M takes complete control. Most receiving yards in school history now for Ryan Swope. <laughs> Remember last year the Baylor game that we had the pleasure of doing? 11 catches, 206 yards, four touchdowns. Scintillated, played through some injuries this year. Is not the leading receiver. Mike Evans took over that role. But when you need dependability, when you need big plays on fourth, third down, fourth down, Ryan Swope's the guy you look for. So how does OU respond? First down and 10. At their own 25. To the sideline, Shepard. And he'll get out of bounds at the 33. It gets simple for them, Gus. They have to get a first down to try and establish some tempo again. Three straight three and outs to start the second half. Only had 18 in their first 12 games total. Over the middle, Justin Brown with space. Brown dives forward and gets into AM territory. So there you go. First down. Now hopefully they can establish some tempo, get some efficiency back in their offense. It's not getting them all back in one big strike. There's still plenty of time left in this game. Jones. Brown again on the other side, down at the 40. Let's 
Let's watch a and this drive and see if they change tendencies with their pressure package or if they play more coverage now. Hand off. Williams. And Williams makes something out of nothing. Spencer Neely, first man to him, but a first down for the Sooners. Gabe Eichert, number 64 in the middle, their center, 4.0 student, will go to medical school. Sat next to him at the team luncheon. And let's just say I didn't feel real smart sitting next <laughs> to that guy. Taught me a few things in a luncheon. A terrific young man who plays guard and center and plays it with a plum for his team. First down to 10 of the 36. Williams again, and he is ambushed by Spencer Neely. The loquacious Spencer Neely. He's the guy that keeps this defense loose. Up front, just watch the pit, watch the interior line. And Neely was playing on the nose, and he's working against Ty Darlington, who's moved in at center, and Eichert has moved to guard. Ty Darlington, a true freshman out of Apopka, Florida. Played high school ball for his dad, Rick, who just won a state championship with the Blue Darters there. Has a tough task, but Spencer Neely over his nose. Second and 12 at the 38. Miller back in the game. They hand it off to Brittany Clay, running near side. Clay, beautiful piece of running. As he dives forward, Howard Matthews stops him. Makes it third down and three. Obviously, this is four down territory for OU. They need points badly. And with them thinking four downs, does that bring the running game back into play now? Because normally this would be a true throw down, throwing down for Oklahoma. We haven't heard from Kenny Stills in this third quarter. Miller turns the corner. And Miller down inside the 20. Jonathan Stewart stops him with a flag on the play. Holding number 18 of the offense. 10 yard penalty for previous spot. Repeat third down. Jalen Saunders. It was a holding call against Notre Dame on a touchdown run that really hurt Oklahoma in that contest. This was a key pickup of a first down and a team desperately needing momentum where they get another holding call and sets them back. The only two losses this season for OU, Kansas State 24-19, Notre Dame 30-13. Call is against Saunders, number 18 in the slot. He's working against Bags, 36, the linebacker. That's a tough one. I didn't see much cloth grab there. Looked like he had him and he slid off. So a third down and 13 at the 39. Landry Jones. Rifles it over the middle and complete. Ball intended for Justin Brown. And that brings up fourth down and 13. And the Sooners offense stays on the field. Fourth down and 13. Jones, flag. Illegal snap, number 56 in the offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Ty Darlington. True freshman playing center, trying to get line calls straight, get people ID'd. And in the words of my college coach, John T. Majors, the Sooners a little bit discombobulated on that play. And now, Coach Stoops will elect to punt it away. 
Tressway at the 42. Dustin Harris at his own 10. And Harris has it at the 12. So the Texas A&M defense turns Oklahoma away once again, and here comes that man. And the poise shown by this redshirt freshman. It was interesting what Coach Sumlin told us in our meeting about Johnny Manziel and some of the honest words he had for him coming out of spring ball. Yeah, you go back to spring practice, he was reckless with the football, kept turning it over to their defense. Coach Sumlin had a private conversation after the finish after this play. Manziel steps up, runs it again, and gets down close to the 20. And he told him straight up, you will not play here if you are reckless with the football. No quarterback of mine is going to turn it over at that rate. And obviously, Johnny Manziel believed his head coach in the offseason went and got some work done with George Whitfield Jr., quarterback coach to the stars, and improved his game to the point that we're seeing Johnny football leading Texas A&M with a Heisman Trophy in his pocket. End of the third quarter. A&M up 34 to 13. Start of the fourth quarter, Texas A&M with a 34 to 13 lead. Let's go downstairs to Julie Alexandria. Thanks, Gus. I'm here with Andy Geis from AT&T. Quite an incredible game we have going on here. A fantastic game for a fantastic cause. <laughs> you actually got to do the coin toss. What was that like? That was really funny. The coin was so big that the ref said, if you flip it the normal way, you're going to hurt somebody. So flip it small and low. <laughs> well, you did a great job. Now, I know education is something that is very near and dear to the hearts of the people at AT&T. Tell me what AT&T is doing to help education. When our uh, chairman and CEO, Randall Stevenson, took over, he started something called the AT&T Aspire Program. And in the short period of time that we've had that program, over $350 million to education here in the United States. And the reason is, is we think it's really important for American business. We think it's really important for AT&T. We think it's important for the country. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank Gus, you. back up to you. All right, Julie, Bye -bye. thank you very much. 34 to 13, our score as we start this fourth quarter. Texas A&M with 268 yards of offense in the third period. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Remember Kevin Sumlin told Julie Alexander at the half, he wasn't worried about time of possession even though it appeared his defense might be getting gassed. This is why his team scores points. Manziel looking. Manziel incomplete. Evans the intended receiver. <laughs> Eric Colvin there defensively. Even when he breaks the rules, it doesn't appear to hurt him much, does it, right? What's the rule about a quarterback scrambling out of side, uh, to the sideline? Don't throw it back towards the middle. Colvin made a nice play, knocked it away, but no interception. But when Johnny Manziel does it, you're, I'm sure Kevin Sumlin is off and going, no, no, no. Oh, great play. Great play. Well done. Let that kid be himself. Well, for Oklahoma, a chance to get the ball back to start the fourth quarter. From the 45-yard line, here's Saunders. And Saunders wrestled down. Special-looking tackle on special teams by Floyd Raven. The UPS Team Performance Index is a statistical measure that looks at the efficiency of a team's offense, defense, special teams, and miscues to define their competitive advantage. Go to UPS.com slash football and check out the index to see where your favorite team ranks. The UPS Team Performance Index, a look at the logistics behind a winning team. Oklahoma at the 45 to start the fourth quarter. Jones underneath to Shepard. Beautiful running for Shepard, and he picks up a first down. So Oklahoma at the beginning of the third quarter, three consecutive three and outs. Their fourth drive, they moved the ball well, although they had to punt it away. So this is a big drive for them as they try to put some points on the board to start the fourth quarter. There can be no more butts at the end of our sentences with Oklahoma's offense. It has to be move the ball and put it in the end zone. 
They moved it not they moved to get a few first downs, but weren't able to finish. Has to culminate with six. From the 44. Jones hands it off to Damian Williams, and he'll go down at the 40. It's four yards on the play. And you know this OU team can score points in bunches. Over 50 points five times this year in a game. Jones delivers. This time, Brown, another first down. And that was a first down. But that's the type of tackling AM wants, meaning tackle the ball carrier in bounds. First down stops the clock for a short time in college football to reset the chains. Jalen Saunders for a three-yard gain. Howard Matthews with the tackle. And AM is rotating in defensive linemen now as Oklahoma's not going super fast. Allows them to get fresh guys on the field. Seeing that that what Oklahoma did in the first half with all the plays they ran and all the time of possession that was good. And it was 14-13. That was to their advantage because they were close. But now 34-13. That's why Kevin Sullivan said he wasn't worried. Thought his offense could extend the lead. And he'll hand it off to Williams. And Williams lowers his shoulder and goes out of bounds close to the 25. As to Shazer Everett. We mentioned his name quite often in this game. Andrew Jones, 32 completions tonight. 32 of 43, 3, 243 yards, a touchdown, and an interception. Third down and three, the 26. Jones deflected at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Mathis looks like he got a hand on it. Let's see. Look in the middle of all the bodies, and Jonathan Mathis gets a big paw up as Ty Darlington is engaged with him. Mathis, a starter in 2010, hurt his knee, missed most of the 2011 season. No more as a run stuffer, but got his hand in the passing lane there. So on fourth down and three, Oklahoma goes for it. Jones under pressure, incomplete. Jonathan Stewart applying pressure. Coach Sumlin loves it, and OU turns it over on down. Texas A&M, what a job in all phases of the game, and the catalyst, the straw that's stirring the drink. Well, you know who's good. AT&T is proud to bring you the Cotton Bowl Classic on Fox. Welcome back. This week, the Fox College Football Social Poll on Facebook asked fans, would Johnny Manziel win another Heisman Trophy? 66% said no. To cast your vote, log on to Facebook.com backslash Fox Sports. They're going with history, aren't they? Only one two-time Heisman winner. Archie Griffin, Ohio State. First down and 10 of 26. Molina running outside. Good defense this time by Oklahoma bringing him down. But the big question for Johnny is he may lose three offensive linemen this year. Talk about the two tackles. Luke Jokel, Jake Matthews, and the center, Patrick Lewis, is definitely gone. But Matthews and Jokel are juniors. They have a decision to make by January 15 about whether they want to come back to school or try to move on to the NFL second and seven and 
Menzel running the option, turns it up with room at the 40, and out of bounds at the 45. He can hurt you in so many different ways. And what he does as the game goes on is that he affects you mentally. Because you can only chase him and miss so many times without that working on your mind and your spirit. And then instead of being maybe an arm's length away from him, you're two arm's length because you're not going as hard. Not because you quit, because he, but because he's broken you down because you haven't gotten home many times to put him on the turf. Menzel, quick strike, Evans. And Evans, guy through, gets inside the 45. And Petros Papadakis, what's interesting about Menzel, he's got that rare ability. It's hard to get a good, clean shot on him. Gus, he just doesn't get hit. I've never seen a guy get a clean shot. It reminds me of Dennis Dixon, not throwing the ball, but when he was at Oregon, Dennis Dixon just didn't get hit. He always got out of bounds and darted around the field and found a way to frustrate you. Plus, the arm, this guy's one of the most special players I've ever seen. I mean, he's got field awareness like Gail Sayers. Strong words. Here's Manzel again. And he goes down at the 40. Those are big time names Petros just talked about. And Gus, in our meetings with not just AM coaches, but Oklahoma coaches, those were not two names that were equated to Johnny Manziel. In fact, we threw names at him, and everyone we talked to came back with the same answer. Do you like Flutie? No, he's unique. Is he like this guy? No, he's unique. They wouldn't equate him to anyone, just to himself. Alita. Alita, out of bounds 35. I thought what was interesting about Manziel, when we met him at practice and you had a chance to stand next to him, he's a bigger guy than you would think. I mean, in terms of thickness, you mean? That's right. He's listed as 6'1", 200. He wears a size 15 shoe. He's got hands that look like baseball gloves. Yeah, he shook my elbow. <laughs> right. This kid could go to this kid could go to sleep tonight and wake up tomorrow 6'7". First down and 10 at the 35. 20 years old. Wasn't it David Robinson who did all that growing in college with the Naval Academy? Right? Late, late bloomer and grew big. Manzel takes it. And goes down inside the 35. And you could see it over the last couple of days just having a chance to be around Johnny. He's he got a little tired. I, I said to him, man, you must be really tired. First thing when I met him, and he said, yeah, I am. Got to get through this game. And at the luncheon yesterday, you could tell that his mind was on this game, and he was ready to explode against Oklahoma. Second and nine at the 34. Manziel lost one up. A watch a cool touchdown. What a beautiful throw. And a brilliant catch. Johnny football, folks. Now he wrapped around Demontre Hurst on the play. And you remember when we had the play where the, the receiver was out of bounds and came back and caught it, wasn't able? But he was engaged that time with Demontre Hurst on the sideline. Extra point up and good. 41 13, Texas AM. Manzel to Wachiku. They love him in Aggieland. Johnny Manzel. And what a game he's had. Manzel has accounted for 485 of the 599 total yards for Texas A&M. He's rushed for two touchdowns, and he's passed for two touchdowns. Folks, he's a freshman. But academically, he's a junior. Very good student. Reminds me a little bit of Christian Ponder at, Texas, at Florida State, graduated two and a half years. Johnny Football on the same type of track. Brennan Clay, Roy Fitch back deep. 
Oklahoma stunned at the score right now with 9 3 to play. Finch. And Finch tackled from behind, flag on the play. As Landry Jones back on the field. OU offense flat line in the second half. What's the adjustment that during the return holding number 41 of the receiving team 10 yards to spot the foul first down. And what's the adjustment that's been made by this Texas A&M defense. I think that's one of the big stories in this game. We know John Manziel has done so much but this defense has been stellar especially in the second half. And I think sometimes it's the adjustments you don't make that are the biggest ones, Gus, because oftentimes talk about going into the half, let's make an adjustment, this is what we're going to do. But most of what they did in the first half was not bad. They gave up one touchdown. All right, gave up yardage, but in football 2012, 2013, that's not the key. Two field goals and gave up the touchdown, that was it. And then they came back in the second half with a very similar game plan, shut down the run totally, and gave up nothing in the pass game and tackled on the spot. Those three and outs were crucial to start the second half. Not many, absolutely. yeah, sorry, not many adjustments by Mark Snyder and his crew. Stuck with their game plan. I think you're absolutely right. One of the things A&M's defense has done extremely well tonight is tackle. And on the spot, you know, when you talk about basketball, when you try and defend a great player, you want to be in his face and be in his space when on the catch. When he catches the basketball, don't give him space to maneuver. They've done that tonight. They've taken away the space for Oklahoma to maneuver very much and then made the plays. First down and 10 for OU at the eight. Damian Williams. There you go. What tackling. This time it's Tony Hewitt Jr. They are playing so fast right now because they're so darn confident. They're excited out there. They feel like every read they make is right. They trust their eyes and they go. And they're so sudden. And when they arrive, people are getting hit. Second and 10. Andrew Jones, incomplete, deflected once again at the line of scrimmage, and that's the second time Jonathan Mathis has gotten a hand on the football. Ninety-two works over the top of Gabe Eichert, all Big Twelve offensive lineman, and knocks the ball away. Third down and ten of the eight. Jones throwing out of his own end zone steps up this one caught on the far side Saunders picks up a first down great run after the catch for Jalen Saunders one of the few misses on a tackle that we've talked about this evening Saunders transferred from Fresno State allowed to play despite an off field incident Here's a big throw to Kenny Stills. And a flag. Devontae Harris covering. Looks like this may be pass interference. And he's going to say that Kenny Stills was hand fighting with him, but Devontae Harris never got his head around. So this is interesting. And it will go against Oklahoma. So Devontae's lobbying pass interference. his interference. Number one of the offense. 15 yards from the previous spot. He just got Second messed up down. on the numbers because one and four are next to each other. So it's going against Stills. Let's see. There's the hand, here comes the hand fighting. And there's the you see how Stills got his arms extended. But frankly that could have been that's well that should have been offsetting. He's got a full grasp of the jersey on the inside. You've got one guy extending the next guy with the grasp of the jersey either offset it or don't throw it because they both were guilty. 
Stills has been non-existent in this second half. In the first half, Kenny Stills with six catches, make that five catches. Only one catch here in the second half. Stills got nailed because his arms extended and opened up the view for the official inside. Harris never extended, he just grabbed cloth. You get away with more when your arms aren't extended. First down and a long 24. Timeout, Oklahoma. So the Sooners want to talk it over. 7.53 to play, fourth quarter. Back after this. Forty-one to thirteen, A&M, Oklahoma, first down and twenty-four at their own thirteen-yard line. Jones, underneath the Williams, and Williams taken down. Jonathan Stewart closing. There's that great tackling we've been seeing all evening from Texas A&M. And as this game winds down, Texas A&M went to Alabama and won, beat the number one team in the country on the road, 29-24. And it's one thing to be the team where you're hunting. But tonight, Texas A&M came in as the hunt did. Everything was about them and Johnny football. And they've worn that mantle very well this evening for a team that hasn't really had to do that all year long. Everything's been a challenge, Gus. Going into the SEC, playing with the big boys, going on the road. And tonight, they've handled being the team chased quite well. And another flag. Play the game. Number 12 of the offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. I know that goes against Landry Jones because he's the quarterback, but that may not be all him. Not sure what's happening with the plays coming in. If there's confusion about personnel, is there a delay? But right now, this is Oklahoma team that's really struggling in all aspects, trying to get something done down the stretch. Second and 28. Here's Jones to throw over the middle. And he has his man at the 22-yard line, Kenny Stills. Stopped by Dustin Harris after a 15-yard gain. Watch Jonathan Stewart on this play and see how deep he plays in coverage as a middle linebacker. Third and 13. Landry Jones in trouble and goes down. Landry Jones taken down by Sean Porter. And that brings up fourth down for Oklahoma. And they will punt. Outside, Porter was bounced between outside linebacker and moved inside to the Weak side inside linebacker position, the will. Outside linebackers where he made his reputation as a pass rusher. And we saw a taste of it on that play. Fifth punt of the game for Tressway. Dustin Harris backpedaling. And Harris gobbled up quickly at the 25-yard line. January 1st, 1988. Last time, A&M in the Cotton Bowl against Notre Dame. Heisman Trophy winner Tim Brown put the Irish ahead. After Notre Dame made the score 10-3, A&M's Alex Morris made a leaping interception in the corner of the end zone. Six plays later, running back Darren Lewis ended the drive. A&M won the game 35-10. The Cotton Bowl all-time wins. AM with four. Texas way out ahead. Notre Dame with five. But Lucky Richardson, quarterback of that team. Here's Manzel breaking free. Manzel at midfield. And pushed out of bounds. 
Johnny Manziel, a gain of 31. <laughs> Met Bucky Richardson in New York City this year, the National Football Foundation dinner, Gus, and said, hey, you were a running quarterback, and he said, don't even try him to say that when Johnny Manziel's now playing that position. What I did wasn't anything close to what this young man does. What a performance by the Heisman Trophy winner. There's a handoff. Williams, and you have to give so much credit to Kevin Sumlin, 48 years old in his first season at Texas A&M. Looks like they're on their way to their 11th win. He's a Paul Bear Bryant Coach of the Year finalist for the second time in four seasons. Named SEC Coach of the Year by AP. Came from Houston where he was 35 and 17 with three bowl berths in four seasons from 2008 until 2011. And we called a number of a &M games last year. And this is a totally different team. They're more physical. Their mentality CD has certainly changed. And they don't get a lead and quit attacking. We saw that a lot last year. Tried to hold on to leads. That's very tough to do in the Big 12. And you just mentioned Kevin Sumlin. Five years as a head coach, pardon me. Three times a conference coach of the year. He's carving out quite a resume. And he took over in difficult circumstances because this team liked Mike Sherman. You know, it wasn't their idea that Mike Sherman should be gone. So Kevin Sumlin and his staff had to win over these guys. And he told a great story in our meeting with him. He said the guys weren't responding in spring ball. They were in a meeting and he just turned off the tape and he said, hey guys, I'm here, I'm here for you, we're going to play a little different, but I need you to understand that things have changed and that you have to roll with the punches. And the kids responded. Seminal meeting right there, you know, to be able to just lay it out in proper terms and he didn't tell them that they shouldn't have liked their previous coach, that's fine, we get that. The heck of a coach, Mike Sherman. Heck of a man. But this is the situation we have. How are we going to make the best of it? And these kids now would do anything for not just Kevin Sumlin, but the entire staff. Remember, he pushed spring practice back weeks to get to know the kids better, to get their strength and conditioning intact, put that into play, and really help this team out. And it's all paid dividends. And he played a hunch. He said, I think I'm going to go with a red shirt freshman at QB. <laughs> he should have bought a lottery ticket that day. <laughs> Manziel on the sideline. He's got the coach's visor on with 2.23 to go. AM punting it away. Saunders back deep. And he has a fair catch at the 10. So let's take a look at our Reese's perfect play from tonight. And of course, he's going to center around Johnny Manziel. Has to. And it started early. Johnny Manziel, flush from the pocket, scrambles. And tight ropes his way with the gallop and canter into the end zone to get AM off and running this evening. The Heisman Trophy has taken Manziel by storm. Talking to the Texas A&M Public Relations Department as they hand it off to his play with a lot of running room. Talking to the Public Relations Department at Texas A&M, they say that now for Johnny, it's almost like he's taken on Rolling Stones, Beatles status. Every time he practices, there are swarms of people just coming to watch him and wanting to be around him. At the luncheon, do you remember what happened when he came up on the stage? He and Landry Jones, the quarterbacks, had to come out and throw a football out for a fan to catch. I'm sitting next to Gabe Iker, the center for Oklahoma, and he's telling Landry Jones to get out of the way so he can get a clear shot for a picture of Johnny Manziel up on the stage. He's like, nothing personal, bro. That guy won the Heisman. But you kind of knew, or his family, they knew that 
very early on in his development that uh, he was going to be a special athlete. And he's played multiple sports growing up. They say that his third best sport is football. The baseball and golf are his best sports. How about that? Second down and one. And Clay running. Let's take a look back, folks. We know him now as Johnny Football, but back then, little Johnny, as a baby, had a ball in his hand. Mom said his name was Jonathan up until about 11 or 12, and he just kept being called Johnny, and she lost the battle. And you see the New York Yankees outfit there? That's why he wears number two. Derek Jeter, he had 15 last year as a redshirt freshman. And when he had the opportunity to go to number two, he seized it, all due to the baseball. 42 seconds remaining. Landry Jones. And Sumlin gets the Gatorade shower. I think he's won him over, Charles. <laughs> you, you think? Took a minute. Bob Stoops, disappointing Cotton Bowl, but he's been a part of eight championships as a head coach at OU. They will bounce back. And the two very good friends, Bob Stoops, who gave Coach Sumlin a great opportunity at OU, where they spent five years together. He left Oklahoma, went to Houston, and now at AM. And he picks up his 11th win of the season. AM defeats Oklahoma. 41 to 13. Let's go to LA and Aaron Andrews. Gus, thanks so much. An impressive victory for Johnny Manziel and the Aggies. All of us are saying he did what tonight? Coming up, we'll head back out to Arlington for the trophy presentation. Plus, Eddie and Joey will say wow some more. Wow. And they'll break down Johnny football's historic wow. performance. That's all next on the AT&T Cotton Bowl postgame. Wow. Welcome to the AT&T Cotton Bowl postgame show. We'll see the Texas A&M Aggies celebrating. They deserve it. Absolutely. Well, just moments ago, guys, our Julie Alexandria caught up with the man of the hour, really the man of the college football season, the one and only Johnny Manziel. Johnny Football, what an incredible, incredible performance tonight. Do you feel a sense of relief knowing that this incredible season is now over and you were able to cap it off with a victory here at the Cotton Bowl? There's been too much talk. Uh, there's been too much talk about how you perform after the Heisman, about how the layoff, all that. It was good to just get back and play. There was no rust. There was, there was nothing. We came out and played as a unit, and that's all you could ask for the rest of the team. How proud are you of your team tonight? Couldn't be more proud. For all the seniors and what they've done this year, to go out and win 11 games and just do all the stuff that we've done, it's been, it's been incredible. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Amazing performance. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. Thank you. Absolutely amazing performance. Aaron Andrews, Eddie George, Joey Harrington, and I think the key word that Johnny just said, no rust. Yeah. Hey, mm. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. They, they well, came out. They, they came right out and rolled over top of him. I mean, it was close in the first half, but they had no answer for him in the second half. I mean, Johnny Manziel was simply fantastic. And you got to think about, I'm looking at 2013. You know, look at their schedule. They have I eight have home schedule games, right here. four away games. This team could be in a position for yep. a national championship because they're bringing the key guy back. Yeah. And they can't, no, there's no defense that can stop this Depending guy. on it, if the offensive linemen stay, depending if yeah. Joko right. and Matthews stay. I think even they leave, I think they're fine. Well, it, what I couldn't believe is, is coming into the fourth quarter, he was putting up such numbers that he finished the game 12 yards short passing of being only the second the second player in college football history to throw for 300 and rush for 200 in the same game. He was that close, that close to joining Marcus Tuiasosopo as the only person in history of college football to do that. What an incredible performance after the Heisman, you know, the, the Heisman rust. As a, yeah. as a true, as a, as a, a, a freshman. freshman. As a freshman. This is, that's, that's impressive. Yeah. As a freshman. They had that performance after winning the Heisman. We said this in our pregame meeting. This is going to be incredible to see how this story with him continues to unfold mm. into mm -hmm. next year, the year after. Unbelievable performance out of him. The year That's after? Really? Yeah, right? Okay. Let's get it back out to Cowboy <laughs> Stadium. Charles Davis with the trophy presentation. Aaron, thanks a lot. I'm here with Tommy Bean, the chairman of the AT&T Cotton Bowl. And Tommy, you get the honors now of presenting 
the Cotton Bowl Trophy to Coach Kevin Sumlin and the Texas A&M Aggies. Thank you so much, Charles. Coach Sumlin, on behalf of Andy Geis and AT&T and the entire board of directors of the AT&T Cotton Bowl, it is a real pleasure to present to you the Field Scoville 2013 Championship <laughs> Trophy. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Coach, in ordinary circumstances, I'd have you go ahead and lift it, but I hear that thing weighs a ton. We'll let you get a little weight room work in first, and then you come back and lift it, but you know it's there, and your team has earned it. Can you give us a quick description about what it's been like for you, your staff, and this team coming together from the time you took over at Texas A&M, culminating with tonight? Well, I, I, first of all, I just want to say, you know, we, we played pretty well tonight, but it wouldn't have happened without the 12th man. Thank you for being the 12th man, the best fans in the country. These, these seniors, uh, I can't say enough about those guys. Uh, they, they fought hard all year, believed in what we were telling them. New change, coaches, schemes, everything else. A lot of young guys got awards this year, but I'm just telling you, this senior class, we, we wouldn't win half the games this year without that senior class, so. A complete victory for you tonight. Offense, defense, special teams, those seniors with the leadership you talked about. But of course, you have a redshirt freshman who won a Heisman Trophy named Johnny Manziel. Did you really tell him in the spring that if he didn't get better with the football, that somehow we might not have seen number two on the field this fall? Well, don't worry about that. He did get better. <laughs> and thank goodness he did, because uh, right now, you know, with what we do, uh, it took us a while to get going. But, uh, you know, like I said, you can put those numbers up against anybody in a year. And, and uh, it's a team effort. We look at all these individual trophies as a, as a team effort. Uh, we, it, this is the first team to win 11 games in a long time. And we're one of only four teams in the history of Texas A&M. These guys played great all year. There's more than one guy. And like I said, it takes a great effort by all guys. But I couldn't be prouder of this coaching staff and this football team. Coach, congratulations to you and Texas A&M for winning this championship. The 11 games, Aaron, the coach was talking about first time in a long time. That's since 1998, the first time Texas A&M has won 11 games. And it looks like maybe the wrecking crew might be back in force. Unbelievable, Charles. Congratulations to Texas A&M. Heisman Trophy winner Johnny Manziel caps off a dream season with tonight's record-breaking Cotton Bowl performance. We'll be right back with more from the AT&T Cotton Bowl post-game show. Arlington, Texas A&M, 41 to Oklahoma's 13. Congratulations again to the Aggies with their Cotton Bowl victory. It's been a great season here on Fox. On behalf of Eddie George, Joey Harrington, and our entire Fox Sports crew, I'm Aaron Andrews. Good night, everybody. Fox Tuesday.